Greetings and welcome once again. So I guess I'm on a roll today. And believe it or not, just after I finished this last video, some idiot commented and he wrote, wow, all mathematicians, I'm not going to read his dribble. You can go there and read it. I actually have blocked him, but I've just copied his comment and how I responded. By the way, there's something I do want to address where this little moron has diverged. He says f of x is equal to x squared plus c. Actually, it's totally unnecessary to write plus c. That's some garbage that your math professor tells you to do. And yes, it is completely unnecessary. Why? Because it does not apply to the mean value theorem. Okay? So the fundamental theorem comes from the mean value theorem. Now remember, I gave you the holy grail of calculus, which is this. I did. Nobody else. I gave it to you. Not Newton, not Leibniz, not any of the morons who came after them. Okay, this is the holy grail. So, if you say, for example, uh, the integral of 2x dx from a to b, uh, that means that means it's this, it's it's x squared, or rather b squared minus a squared. There's nothing about c here, okay? There's nothing about c. You don't have to write, for example, even if you write it like this, even if you just write it without the limits and you say x squared, that's fine. You don't have to write plus c. We know that there are many functions. If you just add a constant and you differentiate them, you'll get the same smooth function. Of course, the moron, Mr. Fact, he says, he says to me, uh, doesn't that contradict? And, and my response was, you know, uh, how does it contradict anything I said? 2x is smooth. He, he misses it, he or she, whatever, missed the entire point. So please, you know, don't don't listen to your math professor. Call out the, dumb, the dimwit. Call out the fool. You do not have to write plus c under any circumstances. Okay? So that's the first part I wanted to tell you. The second part is, uh, while I was thinking about it, oh no, I actually don't want another one. I want to just clear the canvas, right? So the second part is, uh, it reminded me of that idiot Eddie Wu, who's got a massive presence online. And I'm referring to this video of his example of using first principles. Of course, this first principles method is a complete load of shit. And it's flawed from beginning to end, and Wu doesn't understand it, and neither do his students or math professors. Okay, so he's got a lot of videos here. Don't even bother watching them. They're all crap. Okay, now, um, let's just quickly hear, <clears throat> hear what the moron says. <clears throat> I'm working out the difference quotient, which is a secant, right? But I don't want a secant. It's just an approximation, just like us measuring with our triangles. I want something precise, the tangent, okay? So I have to write. Yeah, yeah? Great question. The question. Okay, so, so what he does is, he, he, he says he doesn't want the secant line, he wants the whole tangent, and he believes, he, he, he insinuates or infers that somehow writing this lim h to zero is going to give him the tangent line. Whereas, you know, I've showed you before that there is no finite difference of this form, no finite difference of this form that will ever give you the tangent, okay? H sub i. It just, it's impossible, not even for a rational number or that imaginary thing in, in your dysfunctional brain that you think of as an irrational number. There is no such thing as an irrational number or a real number. They don't exist, okay? Pi is not a number, it's a constant. And it happens to be rational because that's what we appreciate it. Well, that's how, that's how we approximate it. Of course, we can prove that pi is not rational but when we talk about the constant we we are referring to a rational number not something that is irrational okay so this here is completely wrong and then one of the things i wanted to touch on is how he like a little parrot wrote this that's completely wrong you don't have to write that okay so how would you do this example here the correct way he says f of x is equal to 5x plus 1 okay so let's clear the canvas again uh, so many things to fix in so little time. f of x is equal to 5x plus 1. 
So you use you use my you use the Holy Grail, okay? And the Holy Grail uh, says that you take five of x plus h plus one minus five x plus one over h, okay? That's it. And of course, this will work out exactly. You don't even need the, the limiting. You don't need the limiting under any circumstances. You don't need this thing. It's just completely wrong. Uh, so when you when you multiply that out, what you're going to get is this 5x minus this 1x. And you're basically just going to get h over h. And yes, you're going to divide it, and it's 1. And notice here, <laughs> here, h is not 0. This is the only case where q of x, h is not zero okay the only case if for example you had x squared okay let's do let's do one with x squared reset the canvas again so eddie Wu would treat x squared <coughs> with a limit <coughs> you don't need to put the limit value so you use my holy grail again you say x plus h squared minus x squared over h right What's that going to give you on the top? It's going to give you 2xh plus h squared over h. And yes, you don't need limit h to 0. That's just total bullshit. You just divide straight through. It's fine. 2x plus h. This here happens to be the difference in slopes, by the way. This term here is q of xh. There is no need for limit bullshit. And what you do, basically, is just discard it because you want the derivative the derivative is f of x which f prime of x which is 2x remember the holy grail says that that this okay that this is equal to f prime of x plus q of x h so eddie Wu is a moron he's an idiot he's a mainstream trained little parrot and he's produced Many other little Australian morons, just like himself. Yes, I do know better than your professor, by the way. I know better than God. Because as far as I'm concerned, nobody even knows where God is or what he's doing. So, yes, I'll claim that. And if God were to try and tell me that pi or square root 2 is a number, I would argue with, with her or him, whatever. Because square root 2 and pi are not numbers. I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. I'll deal with that topic at another time. In fact, I have dealt with it before, but if anybody has a question, put it in the comment section. Please, no attitude. Goodbye.